Length five and a half kilometres, cost £800,000 and purpose, fencing to protect the local great crested newts. Not what you'd expect in the heart of an industry notorious for high carbon pollution. It's a cement works, but today the government announced funding to make this plant near Mould in North Wales the world's first carbon neutral cement factory. It's exciting that we're here in, and to do that in the UK, to do that in Wales, to not only protect the jobs and the future of this industry, but to also create new jobs, which is also exciting. Cement, the glue that makes concrete work. Concrete, the stuff that makes humanity work since pre-Roman times. And after water, it is the most used substance on the planet. But it has serious emission problems. Producing cement to hold concrete together causes huge carbon pollution. If concrete were a country, only China and America would be causing more of it. So the government's solution, carbon capture here in North Wales, but at a price, a big price. £9.4 billion pounds will be spent across the country. And we need to look at this as an investment. So it's an investment in, yes, getting to net zero, but it's an investment in making sure these industries are fit for the future and can compete in an increasingly globalised economic system with European uh, manufacturers who are also facing the cost of carbon. And so we become much more competitive. The government says pollution cut by carbon capture here and at other sites equates to taking four million petrol cars off our roads. Cement, though, is notoriously hard to decarbonise. This massive horizontal tube, a kiln, is the heart of the problem. Stage one, in the kiln you heat limestone and clay to over 1400 degrees, high carbon emissions, but you can use renewable fuel to reduce them. Stage two, the real problem. The reaction in the kiln that takes place is called calcination and it produces huge carbon emissions as a byproduct. So the solution here in North Wales, capture the carbon from the kiln instead of sending it up the chimney stacks and then send it here instead, under the sea, just a few miles away. Because so much of what you need is already in place here. A network of pipelines so you can pump hundreds of thousands of tonnes of carbon dioxide out under the Irish Sea there in Liverpool Bay and store it in empty gas fields. But with all this subsidy going into carbon capture, how can the cement produced possibly remain competitive? We believe in our target to get to net zero by 2050. Uh, crucial to delivering that. The Climate Change Committee has been really clear. The only pathway to that involves carbon capture, utilisation and storage. We've got huge potential for that. And this, they say, is proof that this can work commercially at scale. The company's cement works in Norway has already cut emissions in half using carbon capture. And their order book for greener, yes, pricier cement remains full. The customers that we're speaking to are saying we are wanting to reduce the carbon content of the buildings and the structures they're doing and the carbon content and the carbon emitted during the operation of those buildings. So it's the full life of those. And whether that's a data centre, a hotel, a house, a bridge, a factory, etc., they want to reduce that. That's what our target is as a country. Skeptics have always said carbon capture is too expensive and untried at scale. What's happened in Norway and now planned here appears to counter that and the government's own climate advisers insist it is the only way to cut hugely high emissions in cement making. But with Conservatives and reform now going cold on net zero, North Wales' chance to transform a notoriously dirty industry could face political as well as economic and technological tests ahead.